You're listening to the Platte River Bard. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Platte River Bard. This is Chris Berger. And I'm Sherry Berger. And we are here today at the Brownville Village Theater with Mitch Bean and Rachel Curtis. They are both the co-artistic directors, and I hear they are married. (laughs) I don't know, but we'll ask. It's a fact. (laughs) It's a fact. (laughs) And as if you've been listening to to us for a while, you will know that this is not our first time down here to visit these wonderful folks, and they are still... We love coming down here. We do. They're still doing such a great job with this theater out here in Brownville. You guys should all come and see some stuff. Oh, gosh, Thank you yes. guys very much for inviting us out again. Well, thank yes. you for thank being you for here. Coming. Thank you for the coming trip. down. Yeah, um, yes. We love it. Yes, we love it. And somehow it always rains. It's not raining now. I know. It's all, yeah. But sometimes Every it time. usually it rains does, when we're yeah. here. Every time we've come, it's rained. <laughs> so it must be good luck. I don't know. Oh, Maybe. if yeah. that's good luck, we get a lot of good luck down here. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Excellent. <laughs> well, you are just, what, like a week away, less than a week away? Less than a week away. away. Less than a week. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh-huh. we're opening the, summer. the musical Between the Lines, which they're rehearsing upstairs right now, so you Yay. might be able to hear it. Music. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I don't recall you doing a musical before. Well, maybe it's been a while. Well, we we do one every summer. Oh. Um, it's you. It has been our opener for the last three summers. Oh, um, wow! Yeah, it, one is about uh, what works for our rehearsal schedule. Um, anything more than that is kind of crazy. Right. Uh, but yeah, we usually do one, and um, we actually the last three we have done have been. Um, some sort of premiere in the area. Um, oh. uh, we did Lightning Thief. Yes, uh, that's and right. And then, we, and that was yeah. we were the first people to do it um, in Nebraska after it had went to off Bra- Broadway. Yeah, Broadway off Broadway. Off Broadway. Off Broadway. Okay. Yeah, um, and then uh, we did the Hello Girls last summer, which was. Um, uh, a, a, some for, form of regional premiere, um, and then uh, it's happening again. So wow. with, between, the between, lines. The between the lines, between the lines. So how long is this musical? Like two length? Lines. Yeah, I I think it's right about two hours. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So that's still quite a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's a heavy lift. Yes, it's hours. still a full length. It's a full show. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So between the lines. So it sounds wonderful. Between right the lines now. is first up. Yes, musical first up. Yeah, it's a really charming, um, almost Disney-esque uh, story and music um, mm-hmm. a- about. Uh, it's based on a Jodi Picoult book that is um, a. It is about this um, teenage girl who falls in love with a fairy tale prince from um, a book she's reading, and then he um, is, is, like comes to life, and okay. she goes into the book and goes to the fairy tale land, and then, you know, it's, it's um, yeah, it's it's really lovely little story, um, cool. sort of about how we all deal with um, changes in um, our world, and um things that are out of our control and coping mechanisms for that and things like that underneath a really like lighthearted, sweet, um, uh, family friendly little musical. And the music is really great in it too. Yeah. It yeah. sounds, and I can, I can hear the Disney esque in it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You describe it. Yeah. Very sort of a Disney very, cut type of a very plot. Very good description. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah and I, I, the, the, the title itself sounds familiar. The, the, I think the book was fairly popular between the yeah, lines. Yeah, it I, was, I, it was a, it was a yeah. New York times bestseller. That's what I thought. Yeah. Cause the, it's, uh, she was reading me everything and I was like, between the lines, it was, a, was a familiar sound. Mm-hmm. So the next one you're going to do is the 39 steps. Yes. Yes. So that yes. will premiere the same weekend as <laughs> yes. between uh, the the infamous 39 say. steps. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, we've actually already rehearsed that one. Um, we So we, we kind of do it out of order, but we um, rehearse that one first, and then we put it to bed, and then we do the musical, and then we just go straight through, open the musical, and then we shift back into 39 steps okay. and do that one. So okay. we're done with 39 steps. We just uh, did our final dress for that one on Wednesday. And um, yeah, it's going to be a really fun show. It's, we did do the traditional casting with just a cast of four. I was going to say, exactly, it was three or four, four. Okay, yes. Yeah, oh. and the two clowns do everything, and it's um, it's just so much it's fun nuts. to watch. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's insane. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's one of those shows. It's one of those shows. Yes. Yeah. That I, w- I would love to do a show like that. I've done 
one show like that where a mm-hmm. couple of people, a whole lot of characters. Yeah, right? yeah. And mm-hmm. I did one like that, and I had such a great time. Those yeah. shows are so much fun. Yes. Yeah, and it's a great challenge for the actors as well, which is which is great. Um, we love yeah. to do stuff like that, you know, because we were hiring uh, mainly college students or recent college grads, and it's just great experience for them to be able to play a role that they have to take on so many characters and be versatile and be flexible. And that show is the epitome of that. And then both of those clowns are also in the musical. So they went right from rehearsing that into uh, rehearsing. (laughs) They really didn't get a break. No. (laughs) And uh, as well as uh, Richard Hannay. Uh, Yeah. Oh, he's in the musical too. He's in the musical too. So. Oh, wow. (laughs) So the way you revolve things, I know we've talked about it before, but for someone who's new listening, Mm -hmm. um, you will start out doing a couple shows, and then by the end of the summer, you're doing all five shows. Yep. So they all end... Yeah, so right we after. like t- so the company meets. We take a week to do essentially each show, but um, after the first two weeks, we open the first two, and then the third week we open the third show, and then we open four and five two weeks later. So by July fourth, all five shows will be up and running. Wow. Okay. So That's any weekend after that, you can come to Brownville and see all five shows in one weekend. We call it the marathon. Yeah, I'm yeah. in the marathon. See, I think that's great. That's what I need to do because if I can get a totally. weekend free to <laughs> totally. to do so, and I'm finicky about farces, and I think you've chosen some good farces. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm very she finicky. Is, she gets picky about know. her farces. I didn't realize she does. that I was. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're kind well, of picky about our farces. Yeah, as Yeah, well. you get tired of the same old uh, one guy women yeah. running around their underwear uh, show. <laughs> Bedroom farce. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've, you know, you've seen one, you've kind of seen them all. But right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I can be finicky, but these are these are great. So that then you great. get some nun costumes <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the next one. Yes. Yeah. Drinking habits is coming up after uh, 39 <laughs> steps, which is hysterical, by the way. It was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we just stumbled upon it, and we... uh, It's been on our uh, Someday We Should Do This One pile for a while. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and I was like, hey, what about that one? (laughs) Yeah, I love it. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. And you'll get some nun costumes and... Oh, there we go. Hanging up over there. More fun with nuns. (laughs) Some wine on stage, (laughs) right? Yeah. Really, uh, quickly, uh, for those that don't know, what's the sort of brief synopsis of drinking habits? Because I think it's a hilarious premise. (laughs) So uh, just a brief synopsis is it takes place in a convent that um, uh, where these nuns are... Sorry, the convent is. Uh, oh yes, what's perpetual it sewing. Perpetual yes. sewing, yes. yes. Sisters of perpetual sewing. <laughs> yes, and um, <laughs> so it takes place in the sewing room, and these nuns are in their convent is um, financially not stable, and so these nuns have taken it upon themselves to make wine behind mother superior, uh, the mother superior's back. Uh, or Sister Superior. No, Mother Superior. Mother Superior, right. sorry. <laughs> okay. I have read the show. <laughs> it's, the, oh, it's the Catholic it's lingo that's... <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly. Taking you uh, out. Exactly. Um, but anyway, so they are making wine behind Mother Superior's back uh, to save their... to raise money to save their convent. Oh. And it's so they're, you know, the whole time just trying to keep this a secret and then of course you know all these crazy things happen a nosy reporter a nosy, a nosy reporter, reporter of it's, course yeah <laughs> and there's some mistaken identities yes and it's Plenty. just like it's just a, a good time and, yeah awesome. and a little bit of a love story as i recall yes yep yes mm-hmm. like some, somebody gets the girl in the end yeah you mean know, like secret family relationships and things like that it's yeah yeah cool. It's a good farce. It's a good farce. And so that one is going to open on June 15th and run till the end. June 15th. So uh, coming up. A couple weeks. So it does open on June 15th. It is um, an exclusive opening for any of our contributors. So if anyone is listening to this, um, if you want to be invited to the exclusive opening of Drinking Habits, all you have to do is contribute. There you go. (laughs) Very nice. And following uh, that performance for our contributors, we're going to the winery in Brownville. So it's like perfect. Hey, cool. (laughs) Special reception at the winery. That is awesome. Great idea. That's a great idea. So if anybody hasn't been to Brownville, it's really an arts place. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. you even have um, some museums that are really interesting looking that I haven't been in. Yeah. There's there's several like... 
artists in residency here. Um, there's um, a glass blower, um, a watercolor painter. Um, yeah. There's a, a, a potter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As well, and then there's just lots of other museums. There's the mm -hmm. um, the Carson House, which is just an old um, house that you can tour, and the Bailey House, and they're just really fun historic. There's the winery. There's the um, uh, River Inn Resort, which um, is a floating hotel, as well as oh, they cool. have the Spirit of Brownville, which goes up and down the river mm -hmm. on uh, dinner cruises. And um, you can go on the dinner cruise and then come see a show because yeah. uh, the timing all works out for that. That's Ooh, great. A great idea. And yeah. that's great that you guys partner together so much like that. Yeah, yeah we that's try really to make. Cool. We, yeah, it's part of. Uh, you know, the experience is to come down and spend a day in Brownville. You could see two shows. Um, they would be different. Mm -hmm. And on a Saturday or a, Saturday or a Sunday, you could do the dinner cruise. Um, you can go to the winery. You can go to the museums. You can go see all of the art in Brownville. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Such a great idea. This I is love such a it. Neat little place, man. So you're going to have a little excursion out to the winery. Yes. And then the, sh and then the show. <laughs> That's no, worth no, it. No, no, no. Oh. The show and uh, then the winery. Yes. The show, show first, and, uh, then winery. <laughs> yes. That's going to be a fun <laughs> show. So that we can celebrate, too. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Now, Drinking Habits, fantastic. Uh, the next one coming up, and this is something that I have a s sort of a weird connection with, these shining lives. Uh, I just got done doing Radium Girls over at the Law, yeah. oh, which yeah. is... All about the same kind of situation, the big yes. radium explosion of the early 19th, uh, or 1900s, rather. I uh -huh. got referred to being someone who's from the 1900s the other day, and now I feel really old, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> who the heck said that? Uh, someone young. Wow. <laughs> Tell wow. them you know what You're dinosaurs... You're from the 1900s, aren't you? Stop it. Tell them what you know what dinosaurs are like, too, then. Right. <laughs> but these shining lives... Uh, we almost did it Jeez. instead of Radium Girls. Uh, the, we almost did Radium Girls instead of Radium Because uh, they're both really good. And he they're was both. going back and forth like, ah, which one? And he, he settled on Radium. But I, I would love to see these shining lives. Uh, it, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so it, it does follow women that worked in the Radium Dial Company in the 1920s and 1930s. Um, in Just outside of Chicago. It actually happened uh, after... The Radium Girls. The the Radium Girls happens before. Correct. And these shining the the women in these shining lives would have happened after okay. those women. So okay. it's very kind of interesting when you really think about it because uh, the story of the women in New Jersey at mm -hmm. that plant had already you know been publicized and everything, and mm -hmm. then it happened again in the Midwest. Yeah, the Chicago plant. And it's just like a story about how there were all these warnings and stuff, but you know, there was so much disregard for all of these safety precautions and um, all of these terrible, horrific things that were happening to these women. Um, and one of the things that I think that I have found in my research is just like all of the, you know, it's while it's so horrific and sad and to, to, to hear about, yeah. All of the um, the the research and everything that has come from it, and all of the lives actually that have been saved because of you know because of these women and because their the bravery to, for coming forward and for sure. you know trying to fight this big corporation. We have you know done all this research now on radium, and and now we have all this th these safety things in place and um, and a lot of uh, laws in place for employers. So. Um, it's just a really great story about a group of women that worked at this this uh, this this plant, uh, painting watch dials and being yeah. exposed to all this radium and Oof. and what happened to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. They did so much for uh, those cases and and bringing it to light. They did so much for workplace safety. They mm -hmm. got a lot of stuff passed and a lot of stuff changed. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of a lot of girls and women had to die in order for it to happen, but mm -hmm. but it, but also it was, it was a weird time. I mean, they discovered radioactive material like what 15 years before they discovered how to detect radioactive material. <laughs> yes, yeah. and so mm -hmm. it was it was a, a early 19th uh, 1900s was a odd time. It was, yeah, definitely it, a lot of weird kind of disparate stuff going on. It's like the technology's going up, but people aren't yeah really caught up yet. Everybody's kind of still in the country almost you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. it was an odd time mm -hmm. i think one of my favorite things about it is it does parallel a lot of what is happening today in the world 
and and I think you can apply it to so many things that are happening. So I think that's why it's such an important show that we're putting on. Hundred years later, people are still feeling the same way. Mm-hmm. Stuff's going a little Corporate too fast. Corporate greed. Too. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. and right. exactly. Well, and so just since you read both scripts, what, why did you decide on this one between yeah, the other? Yeah, why did you decide on yeah Shining I think, Lives? I think we chose these Shining Lives because um, they're out. I actually did Radium Girls when I was um, in high school, so I was very familiar with that cool. script, um, even though it's been a while. Um, <laughs> but uh, These Shining Lives has this sort of poetic language to it, um, and it is very sort of like a, f- a fluid telling of it um, with less characters, and it's a shorter show too. Okay. Um, and I just, I think it's just, beautiful i think it is it, it, the way that uh the playwright has put this language um into this these stories as heavy as the material is it's still you still have all the, this deep connection with the mm-hmm. women and um you you sense all of the uh, horrifying things without um it weighing so heavy on you mm-hmm. uh, that's okay. why i think it's beautiful fair enough okay yeah yeah, yeah. That's the crazy thing about that because we were reading and doing a lot of research, and it's like, God, what's it? You know, because I remember hearing about the radium craze mm-hmm. of the early 1900s, and they didn't phase it out until the 70s. Mm-hmm. They were still putting radium and stuff yeah. until like the early to mid 70s, and they finally went, Well, okay, we'll stop. <laughs> it's like, Wow, <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. Cool. Whoops. Oh, that'll be awesome. These Shining Lives. That'll be a fantastic uh, yeah. production uh, and, and, and such a good story and uh, such an important story and relevant, I think, unfortunately, again. Yeah. 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 And that one will open on July 4th. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. It's an American story on the 4th of July. There you go. <laughs> That's great. Very American. I love Very it. American. <laughs> <laughs> drama. <laughs> We got an American drama. That's right. And then another one, Tuck Everlasting. Tuck Everlasting. Yes. Now, I'm familiar with this because they did a movie, but was this a book yeah. first? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Yes. Okay. Um, Natalie Babbitt. Natalie Babbitt, mm-hmm. yes. And this adaptation was actually written by oh. her son-in-law. Yes. Mark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Her son-in-law. Mm-hmm. And he, um, Frateroli. Yeah, Frateroli. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. And so there's even a note at the beginning of uh, the play, just being like, you know, this was my, this was my mother-in-law, and um, wow. yeah. And she, um, like, gave him the blessing to make this adaptation. That's great. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very nice. And this is another drama, so... Yes. Yeah, it is yeah. um, it is our, our piece that is specifically geared um, more towards uh, kids. Yeah. It's our uh, okay. TYA play of the summer. Um, but a lot of people, including myself, uh, read it growing up. And um, so there are certainly people that have an attachment to the story already. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's kind of the perfect thing for people to bring their family to Mm -hmm. um because it's really it's a story for all of us um Mm. uh for people who are unfamiliar it's a story about a family who uh drinks from uh this spring and it turns out that it is um like the fountain of youth and they never get older um and um when a little girl stumbles upon the spring and they discover it they have to essentially explain to her why she can't tell everyone because why why it has become a really unfortunate thing that they um uh, have to live forever mm. so it's okay. a, a lot about mortality yeah and, um cool. yeah but it's it's told for kids but they it's, can accept yeah, that exactly mm-hmm. right yeah mm-hmm. this is one of those books that made its way yeah. into like on school reading lists mm-hmm. and stuff for quite mm-hmm. a while a yeah. lot of a lot of folks read this book yeah, mm-hmm. yeah i love that you have such a good mix of drama and comedy and then a musical as well that's that's great and it, nice it does help people who need to be able to decide for kids or whatever what yeah yeah they can go yeah. to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, and that one opens July 5th as well. July. Oh, no, July 5th. July no, 5th. The next, the next day. The next day. The next day, yeah. After the next day. these shining lives. So as of the 5th, you guys are rolling with all five. Yep. Yep. That is amazing. And we never do the same one back to back. So Six performance in a Luna weekend, five different shows. It's just crazy. And the whole idea that the sets have to be moved from another floor between yes. each one is just crazy yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That we stay really... busy. I love it. Do you do the set design as well? Um, so we, I do two of them. And then we also have another person come in who is our technical director, Jarvis Johnner. He comes for about a week and a half or so and he designs the other three yeah. and then I kind of help build them right. as okay. well. So. Okay. But you always yeah. have to keep that in mind about all the moving. I mean, it has to be yes. light enough to move but yep. yeah. solid enough to yeah. be able to handle all the moves. The logistical <laughs> yeah, yep. issues of yeah. the set. We have a lot of those Ish, like a lot of different kind of ways of thinking here because we're not doing one show at a time. We're doing things in reps. So uh, yeah. we find all the time that when we hire new people, they think that it's going to be just like straightforward, like, oh, yeah, I know how to do a show, but we have to teach them how to do rep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. do a show here. Yes. 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 And it's never just one. I mean, we once we were done rehearsing the 39 steps, it was like, okay, now we all – transition into the rep part because you learned that show but you're not we're not going to open it yet and you also are going to be learning another show and then you're going to be learning another show <laughs> have I love to have it. some great memory and have <laughs> yeah. to be able to do it and <laughs> muscles <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's great I, I love your setup here and you guys are always buzzing yep yeah great energy yeah here. it's yeah where everyone's always working on something which is great. You know, we're all working towards the same goal. Yeah. So. And it's and it's all very close quarters. So mm-hmm. <laughs> we're sitting, we're, we're set up right here next to the costume shop. Yes, we are in the costume shop, by the way. I'm sure you've heard uh, sewing machines and things going on. And of course, they're rehearsing right upstairs. So we are in it. the thick of it. We love it. It's great. It's a great place to be. It's like <laughs> being in the eye of a tornado. <laughs> Only better. Sometimes it doesn't feel like the eye of a tornado. But. That's true. It's a good feeling. You know, and Twister and they... Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a Midwest. We love tornadoes. Yeah, and they put the little things up and they send out all the things and they tell everybody there's a tornado yep. coming. Yeah, and it throws oh, a cow around. There's coming. my there's language. Many. I love Twister. <laughs> I've watched that movie like three times a year. They're making oh. another one. They're making it called Twisters. I know. We'll see. I know. And without, so Bill Paxton, know, that's without Bill Paxton. Without Bill Paxton. I know. Aww. I'm very sad. That's the first thing I thought of when they said yeah. Twisters. I was like, oh, oh no, okay. Bill Paxton. And he was such a good person, like, in real life. He was a great dude. That he was the kind of star that you actually liked because yes. he was he was super nice. Bill Paxton life. was cool. Yeah. I hate that one. Game over, man. Yeah. <laughs> so sad. Yeah, so sad. Very sad. I, I worked Twister into it. I'm sorry. That's I can okay. edit that. That's right. <laughs> We're in the Midwest. Sometimes yeah, we talk about right. tornadoes. Yeah, <laughs> it's tornado season. It's appropriate. In addition, that's fine. In addition to all of the great plays you are doing and musical for the season here at Brownville Village Theater, that is not all that you are doing. Nope. That's as, correct. As if, as if that wasn't enough. Yep. Five shows at once. Most people would say, you know, that's good. I'm good. <laughs> But no, not here at the Brownville Village Theater. Yeah, we're crazy. <laughs> five, sh- five shows plus workshops. Yeah. yeah. Well, in July. We've started doing stuff for kids in the off season. Um, it's called our Young Performers Program, essentially. And we do a workshop in the spring. And then we always try to do like uh, a full-length show in the fall. And Ooh. we... We're just brainstorming one year, and we're like, we never do anything this summer for the kids, and that's that's when they're available. That's their big time. Right. That's their big time. So we thought it would be, you know, it would be appropriate and fun for us to add some young performers day camps yeah. um, here at the theater. So we have three different camps coming up. They're all in July. Okay. Um, so the first one is an intro to theater camp. It's for kids ages uh, 7 through 10. And it's just like a basic intro to theater camp. We play some theater games, some improv games. We teach them a little bit of theater etiquette. And then we also give them a scene to work on as well. And uh, it's just a, like a three-hour course. 
That is for the younger kids. That's and then great. on July 16th, we have an improvisation camp for ages 11 through 18, which is, you know, going to focus more on improv games. And we play some theater games as well, but it's mainly improv based. And then uh, we do some long form improv. And then all of the all the camps have a sharing time at the end for parents to come watch. Um, cool. And That's then great. the last one is on July 17th. It's a musical theater camp, which we've never done before, Ooh. but we've had some kids um, express interest in doing musical. And so we thought, you know, if kids are asking us about this, we should we should try to accommodate. Oh, so, yeah. so we're really great. excited about that one. We're going to have like a group number that we're going to choreograph for them to perform for their their you know family at the end, and then we're going to give them a, a song to work on as well to sing. And yet, this is still not all you do. But wait, <laughs> there's more. I'm like. <laughs> Have- now, how much would you pay? What else? What else? <laughs> well, I, I'm just getting started. Yeah, I'm just actually, getting started. <laughs> because you have a murder mystery troupe that you will take on the road if if mm-hmm. yes. if someone yes. uh, you know books it with you. Yeah. And then you also usually have something in the fall or the winter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so. The thing is, we haven't planned <laughs> our, fall, our fall and winter stuff yet. Um, okay, all right. Haven't, haven't got there yet. All right. We haven't yeah, got there yet. We won't ask okay. yet. No pressure. Um, <laughs> just, just tell people to watch for it. Yes. 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 Yeah. We will try to get it all the information out in like July, August. Okay. Um, that's okay. when we try. We are definitely going to do a young performer show, something full length for kids to be in. Um, okay. Lean we in we definitely direction. want to do that. And then I'm not sure if we'll do something else. Um, usually, like last year we did Willa Cather's A Resurrection, yeah. which is a short story written about Brownville that Rachel adapted for the stage. That's, that's right. so yes. awesome. And it was our third time doing that show. We did that in the fall and then we did a Christmas show with kids in winter which actually Rachel wrote that one as part of um one of her as part of her grad program that she's in yeah cool how's the grad program going it's going great I'm going into my last semester I graduate um uh, in January officially all right congratulations yeah it's been great finish Um, line is in sight very good for you yeah and I've enjoyed it I'm not really ready for it to be over except maybe the money (laughs) but (laughs) right but uh yeah but besides that yeah I've really enjoyed it Um, and the graduate degree in playwriting playwriting okay Mm -hmm. very good Mm -hmm. okay cool she'd be great for a play I would say we need more playwrights we need more local playwrights Oh, well, here yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Do you get to walk? Do you, uh, are you going to uh, walk? So they do um, their own graduation for um, the MFA in writing for UNO, and it is at the Lead Lodge in Nebraska City. Oh, so awesome. it, they like it's very actually super sweet um, little ceremony that they do where they read from your work. Oh, uh, yeah, it's okay. really nice. That's a yeah. great That's cool. idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. Well, mm-hmm. congratulations Thank in advance. Yes, oh, congratulations you. in advance for January. Uh, well, oh. you guys are just so talented. And I'm just so I'm just so happy for both of yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. To be young and all oh, that excitement. Yeah. <laughs> hey. We're it's aging we, us every day. That's all right. Uh, we're younger than we think we are. That's right. Yeah. That's right. 50 exactly. is the new 30. Don't you forget that. Or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but oh no thank you so much for letting us come down here yeah, and we see really you enjoyed again it. and talk to you, you guys so yes. much. Yes. We, we appreciate your partnership it's always <laughs> fun to hear about what you have going yeah well thank you so much for being here we oh, really appreciate gosh, it we love it thank you and yeah. all you do for the arts community especially in rural areas like like brownville this is huge yeah just make it so vibrant huge. and really yeah. sort of contributing to Brownville as well with the way you guys are partnering mm-hmm. with everyone oh, in town. absolutely. Yeah. That's just outstanding, man. Yep. Thank you for all you do. Yeah, yep. Thank you. Thank you for all you do oh. for the theater community, <laughs> too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, now we're going to talk with Bella Walker, Rachel Grossman, and Jack Danter. They are all doing costuming. <laughs> <laughs> among among other things, because uh, nobody around here just wears one hat. No, nope, mm. no. Nope. Uh, we have uh, Rachel and Jack are the the the, the hair and makeup department. Yes, I believe you yes. Right there. <laughs> That's a whole department right there. We love it. And then now Bella is directing. I am. I'm directing Tuck, Tuck Everlasting, Everlasting this summer. Ooh. 
very <laughs> nice. That's exciting. Among other things as well, <laughs> when you are the um, costume designing, drinking habits, and then I am the official intimacy coordinator for the entire summer for all the shows. We Wonderful. Love it. As usual, so everybody got, is doing everything. Oh, yeah. We oh, love absolutely. It. So Rachel much. is designing two shows, hair and makeup. Yeah. And yes. Nice. I'm designing three shows, hair and makeup, nice. and I'm stage managing a show. Cool. Yes. <laughs> That's great. See, I love that. That's the way I like to be too. Just totally immersive. What else needs to be done? I'll do theater. it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, so much fun. So There's much fun. There's nothing else to do around here. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hands on. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's wow. all right. Ah, oh, we love it all. Uh, thank you for talking with us. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've sort of been listening to us interview <laughs> and, and working. You've been hearing them work in the background this whole time. Well, we just kind of come and just crash the party. We just set up our table and right. in the nah. middle of everything. It, nobody seems to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Bella, of course, you are back. Yes. This is number three. It sure We is. talked to you twice. You've talked to me actually three Has times. Has it been all yeah. three times? All three times. Three Man, times. it's hell getting old. Mm-hmm. Oh, I feel that too. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I talked to you? <laughs> What's your name again? Oh, yeah, right. I know. Isn't that terrible? Uh, but uh, thank you for speaking with us again. Yes. And, and now, now this is the is this the first time you've been directing yes. here? Yeah. First time directing here, and it's my first full-length show directing. So it's, it's oh. a very big opportunity to be oh, imparted yes. on me for this summer. Um, I feel yeah. very grateful and lucky f- that Mitch and Rachel are trusting me, and yeah. um, after meeting this whole company this year, I'm even more excited to be directing because it's a really hardworking group, a really talented group, as always, but right. so there's something very special about everyone that's here this summer. So, yeah, it's, it's very cool. And what a great opportunity. Now, have yes. you finished school? You, yes, you finished I graduated about two years ago. Okay, okay. you are done. Um, okay. yeah. So my first summer here was right after I graduated college. I went yeah. to West Texas A&M University. That's right, Texas A&M. That's yes, right. and we have four company members this year from my college. No way! We sure do. So um, our professors are calling it West Texas North. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's, it's very special. Sounds like you may have inspired some folks <laughs> yes. to, to come up this way. Yes, I'm, I'm very happy that they're here you. and, you know, reconnecting with them has been really fun and meeting all these new people is also a great opportunity. Mm-hmm. That's super cool, man. Yeah. Congratulations. I Thank love you. it. I love it. Um, first full length play. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have yet to do a full length play by myself. Mm-hmm. I've done some hour longs and some shorter stuff, but how do you like it? Oh, I, I we'll find out. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, I'm, I'm very excited. I've done a little assistant directing and some student directing as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel ready. I feel prepared. I feel supported by everyone around. Um, Mitch and Rachel are really great about, you know, mentoring and fostering a really like creative work environment. So I am nice. not really, I mean, I'm not worried at all. I'm, I'm excited to be able to jump into that. Um, the season altogether is a very, <laughs> it's a big season. There's a lot of really new, interesting things happening on our stage that mm-hmm. haven't happened yet. Mm, um, yeah. A lot of really like atmospheric, fluid, creative things that are happening with the sets, with the soundscapes. Um, We're really pushing what we've done. um, And that comes in play with the Shining Lives uh, that I know you guys talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And the musical also tackles some topics that uh, we find important to be bringing to the small community of uh, rural Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Not to mention, uh, nothing has happened on our stage yet because we got a new <laughs> stage this season. It's brand oh, new, oh, brand new one. Oh, we're a new stage. This? You guys got a new stage, totally. Yes, brand yes. New stage. Uh, it's gorgeous and beautiful. It really oh. is. We'll and have to. Was, um, we'll have to ask and see if we can look at it on oh, the yes. Yes. yes, very nice. <laughs> so now, Rachel and Jack, you said this is your very first time here. Yes. Yes, it is. How do you like it so far? I love it. I do too. Okay. We've been we've been having so. we've been having a great time. Um, this really is kind of a magical place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely is magical, and we I all agree. get along really well already. I I really like Bella said. There's something special about this summer. The twelve of us mesh, mm-hmm. and that's I think really, you see it up there. Very nice. Oh, for sure. Agreed. Oh, that's cool. That's great. So tell us a little bit about yourselves, uh, costume and makeup department. Please go first. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank yes. you. Um, well, I'm I'm Rachel. Um, I am from St. Louis, Missouri, and I am going into my senior year at Lindenwood University, which is about half an hour outside the city. I'm a musical theater major, um, but I also have done work in the costume shop and everything like that. Um, This season, I am makeup and hair designing for the 39 Steps and for Drinking Habits, and I'm in 
between the lines, drinking habits, and tech everlasting. So I'm really excited. This is my first professional theater gig ever, and it's just been awesome. an amazing experience, and I could not have asked for a better way to spend my summer. Oh, that's great. First professional theater gig. Boy, yeah. right into the, <laughs> out of the frying pan, yeah. into the fire. In this oh, no, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's great, though. A little like being thrown into the deep end, but it's the best way to learn. So. I, I agree. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. And what about you, Jack? Yeah. Um, I just graduated from Truman State University with a degree in theater where I concentrated on directing, costume design, and performance. Cool. Um, my three loves. <laughs> and this summer, I am designing hair and makeup for Between the Lines, Tuck Everlasting, and These Shining Lives. Cool. And I am um, stage managing drinking habits. And I am in the 39 Steps, Tuck Everlasting, and Between the Lines. <laughs> um, it's a very exciting stuff. Bella mentioned that Between the Lines tackles some interesting topics to bring to this community. Mm -hmm. The character of Jules, who I play, is openly non-binary in the script. Okay. And the other characters talk about it openly. And it even tackles some, um, there's like a lot of bullying in the show, and Jules is a victim okay. of a lot of that bullying. Okay. And it takes a really interesting stance about um, knowing who you are and loving yourself in the face of adversity that I think is really interesting. There's this scene in, in the show where Jules explains to the main character what being non-binary is. And I think that for an audience like ours, it's going to be, for maybe some of them, the first time they've ever heard of this. And as a non-binary person myself, I find this opportunity, I'm, I'm absolutely so grateful to Mitch and Rachel. Yes, that sounds like a really great opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's really special. a nice way to present it and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, yeah, and contextualize it. Yeah, for sure. It's very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> and it's a great show. Oh, and, my gosh. And it's, the music is beautiful. Yeah, it's and fun. also a great show. A great <laughs> show. I, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> listeners have heard it upstairs a little bit. Dude. Yes, we, we've been <laughs> yes. filtering down here. It's the beautiful. prince and the princess are singing together. Yeah. <laughs> that's been beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, directing, uh, acting, costume design, mm -hmm. uh, which is what you went to... to Truman. Uh, Truman Four. Um, which one would you prefer? <laughs> directing. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, just directing. I just directed my first full-length musical at university. I directed The Lightning Thief as our main stage. Oh, The Lightning Thief. Yes. Yeah, our main <laughs> stage production. So. Excellent. I am directing a musical sounds terrifying to me. How how did you enjoy that? <laughs> it was. You also have a musical director too, so I mean. Right. Yeah, we had terrifying. a music director, but I was also the choreographer. Oh, and, okay. Um, Choreography too. It was the most fun I've ever had in my life. I, I would get to rehearsal like in half hour, 45 minutes early every day and I would sit in the chair and I'd go, when's everybody going to get here? Oh my God, I'm so excited. Thank you everybody's going to come. Is everyone going to have fun today? I'm having so much fun. And it was, it was just like unicorns and rainbows and like happy and it was so fantastic. I just that's loved awesome. it. Ah, uh, that is awesome. I love to hear that. See, and that's so inspiring. And it seems like everybody that we talk to up here Everybody is sort of of that mind. Everybody is ready to go. Yes, absolutely. Give me all of the things. I will do all of the things. I can do all of the things. And if not, I'll figure it out. I just, everybody is like it, like that here. We had the scenic boys yesterday. They were done in the shop and they were like, we need a task to do. And we had like four of them hunkered down over the costume table, seam ripping and learning to hand sew for <laughs> hey, the very first right. time. Good. Hey, man. They did a great job. Yeah. They really did. Yeah, it, de it definitely takes a very um, special attitude to work in a place like this where you really are hands-on, constantly working, nose to the grindstone every day for so many hours. But, but it's so fun. We, all, we have so much fun here and we all love it so much and it's just... I don't think anybody could do this, but everybody here can. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true teamwork. It's not the. It really is. Oh yeah, <clears throat> that's not my job situation. It's, no, it's, it's all hands on deck yeah, all the time. Has to, yeah, everything's got to get done in a week. Every show has to be mm -hmm. fully created in that week, no matter who does it. Yes. Yeah. Love it. That's Thank great. You. So now I need to go. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Jack. Thank, Thank you, so Jack. Much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. What have you been doing since we talked to you last Ooh. a year ago? I have been doing a whole <laughs> lot. I believe you. I've had a very busy and blessed year in Chicago. Hey, good um, for you. Yes. 
Um, I'm working as a, a dresser on um, some of the theaters out there. I've worked with Chicago Shakespeare Theater. Cool. I've worked at Steppenwolf and with Goodman. Did you work at Steppenwolf? I did. Ooh, I did. I really enjoyed my... Oh, yeah. I was jealous of myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was very cool. And um, yeah, my girlfriend and I are, are working both as dressers out there. And we're having a really like fruitful career in something I never really thought I would be doing. Oh, and I awesome. feel very fulfilled doing it and happy. I've gotten to work with some really amazing people, as always. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, some of my favorite shows from the last year. Um, I got to work on Illinois, which is now Tony nominated. Yeah, actually, that got nominated. Yeah, yeah, that one got nominated. Um, the Magic Flute at Goodman. Cool. And oh, and purpose, which is a new um, Brandon Jacobs Jenkins play, um, is the world premiere, and that was at Steppenwolf. Which Steppenwolf, is a very cool. Steppenwolf show for the <laughs> very Steppenwolf show. Yes, cool. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was a really nice year, and um, I'm so happy to be back in rural Nebraska. Oh, I'll tell you, outside of the city for right. a little bit. I think Rachel and Mitch are pretty happy that you're back. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's very sweet. Yeah. Do you get to visit at least? I mean, it's got to be hard to be away from your girlfriend oh, and all that. Oh, yeah. well, she actually was here for just a few days. And she, okay, cool. She came in and she was helping us in the costume good. job. So. <laughs> good, good. Is she so, going to come down and see Tuck? Oh, she's sure going to try. Yes, she's sure going to try. And, go. you know, my folks are coming again, and they, you know, make a big trip out of it every year. And a lot of families, you know, the first summer, and I'm sure your family will experience this, of they they hear they're, they're out of college or college students going to Nebraska for the summer to do theater. And they're yeah. like, why Nebraska? Yeah. That's so right. And someplace in Nebraska they've never heard no, of. No, exactly. <laughs> yes, right. no, my parents were definitely um, a, a, little, <laughs> a little confused when I told them that I was coming here. So. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Are they, they going to come down and see you for sure? Yes, they are. Awesome. Um, come up. Yes, up, come I up. Guess, I, yes, I guess, yes. Up. From, from St. Louis, we are, we are up. Uh, yes, but... <laughs> My parents and my two younger sisters are planning this big, like, same thing. They're making a big trip Yay. out of it, and they're going to come see all the shows. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. <laughs> that's, that's great when they can come and visit you. Mm -hmm. because And understand that you want to do this. Yes. And understand so, that yeah. the work that you're, you know, you haven't called them in three days, and yeah. you haven't text, sent back a text or, you know, something like that. They get here, they see all the work you're doing. And they totally and they're like, get it. Oh. I, uh, I understand. I'm right. Now. Yeah. I get it. Yep. I get yeah. it. <laughs> they hear us talk about it like this, and it, it's it's special. I keep saying it's like I get bit by the bug, and I just keep coming back because I can't I can't stop. I get, it's so fun good. here. I have such a good time. Good. Yes. <laughs> what a great place to learn new things. Mm -hmm. and, oh, absolutely. And although it's kind of initiation by fire at the same time, <laughs> but you get to learn something new. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Or yeah. Mm. Awesome. So how many plays are you in? I mean, did you say? Oh, yes, you I'm, in, I'm in three. I'm three. in between the lines, um, right. and I'm playing Grace and uh, Queen Maureen. So I'm kind of like the mom role of the show. Okay, um, cool. Grace is Delilah, the main character's mother, and then Queen Maureen is Prince Oliver's mom in the storybook. Um, and that's been such a fun role. And then in Drinking Habits, I'm playing Sally, who is one of the reporters that mm. uh, comes in and tries to bust that whole <laughs> wine-making operation. And then yeah. uh, I am one of the narrators in Tuck Everlasting. And Jack is actually the other narrator. So okay. we work together quite a bit this say, yeah, season. Yeah, you guys are kind of two peas in a pod. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, us St. Louisans got to stick together. That's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you find time to learn your lines? I mean, when because you're that here and everything's happening. <laughs> Happening. It's, you can't, it's hard to focus, I would think. It Focus is a huge thing that goes into learning your lines for the summer. Um, we have a process called woodshedding and comboing. Um, and it's a series of repetition of sections of your play. Um, so the director will go upstairs, they'll block those you know, six or seven sections, um, and then you basically repeat one section over and over and over again, um, three times on book, three times off. Is that right? Yes, that's right. right now. <laughs> um, yeah, and right. then you do all of that a bunch of times, and then you combo it, which is another series of, you know, repetitions, and then it's in your head for the rest of time. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a fair amount that goes on on breaks, when you're downstairs, you're going Absolutely. through those lines in your head. Yeah. But I'm shocked every year I'm able to 
hold that much stuff in my head. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does help to, um, after we've signed our contracts and everything, Mitch and Rachel actually mail us the scripts. Um, so we get a little bit of a head start. Yes, we do. Oh, we do get the chance to get a little bit of a head start. Um, and for the musical, at least, we're expected to come into the season already off book on music. Oh, so. fair. Well, that's okay. good. You know everything up front, and you get to have some time to focus. Yeah, I would need quiet to focus. <laughs> <laughs> I, it Me would too. be hard to be have to be on and doing everything else, and then yeah, because when you get in at nine a.m. in the morning, mm-hmm. and you're you know got five hours of sleep, you go right. right back upstairs and start rehearsing right right again, and yeah. right, you know, yep. it it makes you ready to do a scene at the drop of a hat. Uh-huh. Um, it for especially for a lot of like young career actors which is primarily you know the people working here yeah um it gives you a lot of discipline and and diligence and learning things um and it's an invaluable skill that i hope everyone learns this summer and is learning this summer absolutely absolutely no i've i yeah i've only been rehearsing for a couple of days would you like to rejoin us (laughs) you're more than welcome they took a 10. I got Yay, we have Jack back. Uh, Jack just joined us. Yes. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Always moving. No, but I've, I've only been in rehearsal for a couple of days, and I already feel like I've just learned so much about, like, what works for me as an actor and how Ooh. I need to prepare as well yeah. for a rehearsal process like this. Mm-hmm. That's really nice. Yeah, so you're great. finding out how you work best. Yes. That's really good. That's really good. That's extremely valuable. A lot of people don't learn that till. Much later. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> we worked with a few like, actors just like that. Yeah, or they're <laughs> the wrong way, or not that there's a wrong way, but a wrong way for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That doesn't work for them, but somebody else <laughs> sort of had them do it, and it totally doesn't work for them, yeah. and they get frustrated. And yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. Yes. We had just asked what, how they learn their lines with everything going. So we that's, about that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Yes. I just, I'm one of the clowns in the 39 Steps. Are you one of the clowns? Yes, I am. Oh, yes. I have a lot of lines. <laughs> yes, I got a lot of lines. And more than that, what is it? They say on the back it's got 150 characters. Bella plays three. Uh, woohoo, woohoo. Woohoo. Um, That's Brandon it. Brandon plays one. And me and Cole play the rest of <laughs> The them. rest. Um, uh, so, <laughs> so how are you learning your lines? They're all learned. Good oh, for you. We put yep. that show to bed already three days saying, ago. Yeah, you guys already yeah. did so, that one. Yep. Uh, that. What really helped me was trying to differentiate the characters. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you're doing Scottish accent, British accent, Cockney, Irish, and um, you're doing each one five or six times at least. Sure. So sure. how you Thank differentiate God. each accent from the accent from the accent that's the same accent but not the same person doing that accent is sure. difficult. But yeah. Mitch is a really great director and is so encouraging. Good. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Do you have a lot of I, – I, I'm trying to think when I saw it. He had a lot of hats. Oh, oh we got oh, so, so, yeah. Yeah. Lots of so I don't know if it's the same. Hats, hats and we've stuff, got a lot yeah. of physical yeah. clowning. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. yes. <laughs> Rolling around on the ground, uh, getting thrown over people's shoulders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That um, would be such a fun role as one it of the clowns. It is so fun. Yeah. I've ne- I've, it is the most physically exhausting thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I dance in musicals all the time. I thought, surely that's got to be worse than a play. No. No. <laughs> I, I did a show similar. There were three people whole bunch of roles yeah. and I, yeah and, and I've done big musicals where I've been the lead and had to sing all the songs and blah 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 and all this kind of stuff and nowhere near as exhausting Never. as the play mm-hmm. where we had to play multiple <laughs> roles and not even sing I think yeah. there's actually a part where we sprint across the stage back and forth end to end five times in yeah. less than 30 seconds yeah. <laughs> it's I think they it's... describe it as like an Olympic sport in the script <laughs> yes. yes yeah something yeah. like that <laughs> I tell you, I, I, every actor ought to, ought to have that experience mm-hmm. of of, of, of doing one of those shows where it okay now it's time to go off stage if you don't run off stage and throw off your clothes and let the stage manager slam your clothes on you and run back on stage you're gonna miss your cue yeah. <laughs> and it's just so much and fun. you absolutely will and with that i've got to go again <laughs> cue thank you for rejoining us yes. thank you so much oh yes my gosh. something interesting about the 39 steps yes. too which i've heard is kind of new for Brownville, we actually have four people who are both our dressers and scene changers, which Mm -hmm. for having like an even amount of cast and crew is really nice. But honestly, you kind of need it (laughs) for a show like this. I was going to say, yeah. Well, and she helped out during a, 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 the show that I did where I had to play multiple mm-hmm. roles. Um, we had two. We had to have two stage managers, one on each side, because people right. were running off, and we needed to 
uh, you know, she's like wrestling me into a mouse costume at one point. Oh, man. You know, and then pushing me out on stage. Here, go, go, go. And I'm just like, Bleh. I think the front row got a good earful that first, <laughs> the, the first show. <laughs> no. Because he's like, no, that's the arm. And I'm like, no, that's the leg. <laughs> <laughs> His full body mouse costume. He's like, I'm like, I'm going to wrestle you into this thing. Oh my she's God. like, oh, you want to show her? Oh. <laughs> we so fi- much fun. We finally set it up so that we laid the whole costume out. Oh, right. And yeah. because it was a one piece with a zip in the back and, and ears at the top, you know, a head and ears the at the head top. Over, so it was actually kind of hard to get on. It's like, you could have made this easier. To yeah. Go on. <laughs> so we finally, we finally figured out a trick, but... So much fun. It started with, uh, they just need some costume change help backstage. Could you just, it's always do that. so <laughs> low-balled about what you're going to be yeah, you're doing. You're just going to do, you know, a few things, yeah. and then you get there. Like, oh, but yeah, okay, cool. awesome. I think Brownville is like theater Olympics already. Yeah, it is. It's already set up to be that way. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love this place. You guys are so lucky. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I, yes. I, I, I am, I'm very jealous of all the work you guys get to do here and all of, uh, the, seriously, all the fun you guys have here. Because yeah, every time sure. I come here, Everybody's always in a good mood. Everybody's yeah. doing stuff, and they love every part of it. Yes, truly. What and, a great environment this and, is. You can feel it. And Sarah Shides is in the background working hard. Sarah Shides, nice as season. always, yes. sewing away. <laughs> She's sewing so hard, oh. you might be able to hear her. <laughs> Feverishly sewing. That's right. Oh, yes. Bet. It's her ninth oh year. God. Her ninth, yes, ninth season. Ninth yep. season. Yes. Wow, I love that. Coming back again. Mm-hmm. Such a pleasure to come and see everyone. It really is. Thank and you. Uh, it's nice yeah. to see you back again. Thank Bella. you. Thank you. And uh, it's nice to talk to you, Rachel, for yes, the very first it's, time. It's nice yes, to meet you guys. And it was yeah. nice to talk to Jack. And, uh, and of course, uh, and of course, Mitch and Rachel. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Who make all of this possible. Truly. Uh, yeah. and, and thank you to both of you uh, for talking with us. Of course. Of course. Uh, tell of Jack course. we said thank you. Thank you. Okay. We will. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Brownville Village Theatre opens their first show, Between the Lines, June 7th. And on June 8th, they will open The 39 Steps. The following weekend, June 13th, they will open Drinking Habits. And on July 4th, they will open These Shining Lives. And July 5th, they open Tuck Everlasting. All five shows will continue until August 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Tickets can be purchased at brownvillevillagetheater.com. For flex tickets, call the box office at 402-825-4121. Thank you for listening and supporting the arts in the Platte River area and beyond. Please subscribe to our podcast so you are sure to catch all of our future episodes and join us on social media. See you next time on the Platte River Bard. Bye.